Wedding Drama from Am I the A-Hole Sub. First story is titled. Am I the A-Hole for telling my, 27 male, fiancé, 28 female, that my theoretical hall pass would be her sister? I've been with my fiancé for 5 years. We rarely fight and we have a lot of trust for each other. She and I are going to get married in a couple of months. We have an inside joke together that we're allowed to sleep with whoever we want the night before our wedding. We are both very aware it's a joke, and it's not something we really want to try. We haven't said actual names during the joke, yet but she was curious. She said she knows exactly who she would sleep with. I asked her who, she said I'd have to tell her mine first. To be honest I had never really thought about who. But when she asked, the first person that came to mind was her sister who is 5 years younger than her. I know this is probably messed up. I rationalized by thinking, that since her sister looks like a younger version of her, it's like I just want to cheat on my fiancé with my fiancé when we first met. Which now I realize sounds pretty awful. I didn't say, and said I didn't really know. She didn't believe me for a second, and kept asking. At one point she jokingly said, who knows. I might be able to hook you up with her. I guess she could tell on my face that I felt bad about who I thought. She said it's okay, because it's just a joke and she wouldn't be mad. I against my better judgment blurted out her sister's name. She stopped smiling and asked me, what the hell did you just say? I went into panic mode, and said the name of a celebrity, that didn't help the situation. She was unbelievable upset that I said her sister. I tried to give her my rationalization, and that only upset her more. She was near tears, and told me that I was such an a-hole. I told her that she said it was a joke, and that she wouldn't be upset over whoever I said. She said that hers was her hot high school teacher from back when she was 17, and she couldn't believe that I wanted to sleep with her sister. Until last night, I slept on the couch because of it, and she's still sour to me about it. I've talked to some friends about it, my close friends that are women said, I'm an a-hole. My guy friend said I wasn't an a-hole, but I'm stupid. Am I the a-hole? Now let's read the top comments. I have two sisters, and I honestly think this would be enough for me to call off the marriage. I wouldn't want to spend my whole life wondering if my husband is making eyes at my sister. Most of the time when people say these things, they pick a celebrity or someone that it would never actually happen with. Picking someone who you could actually try to sleep with, is a huge slap in the face. You two can start counseling, but you can't take those words back. Yay! I'm with you. I don't think I could move forward with the marriage, a basic trust would be broken. I'd feel like second choice. How to screw up a 5 years long relationship, in just under 5 seconds of bad thinking. An enthusiastic handbook of optimistic ideas going south, even before you'll be able to express them. You're the a-hole, marriage already ruined, trust issues raising. This is the kind of situation that the, oh no baby what is you doing meme, was made for. Bro. Rip. You're the a-hole. Never the sister. Never ever, ever the sister. She will never forget this. Especially when the reasoning is because she's younger than you. Jesus man. I would honestly not be able to continue the relationship. I would never be able to stop thinking about that. Not enough therapy in the world. Now for the second story. Am I the a-hole for dressing nicer than the bride at my cousin's wedding? I got invited to my cousin's very small wedding, which was last week. I had never met her before the wedding, so I knew it was important to make a good impression. I also have deep insecurities about how I look due to being bullied as a child, so I always need to look as nice as possible when I'm going out, even just to get coffee. I started planning what I would wear immediately. The invite said cocktail attire, and I settled on a T-length dress I had worn to other people's weddings, with matching colored chiffon shawl and flats, as well as a real pearl necklace and earrings. I didn't buy anything new for this just did my best with what I have. I made sure my makeup was decent and didn't clash, and made sure to get my hair cut a week before the wedding, so it would look its best as well. Well, I think I was the only one at her wedding that cared about how they looked. Most of the 30 guests were in t-shirts slash polos and shorts. I was one of two guests wearing a dress. The bridesmaid wore something that looked like it was out of Hot Topic. The groom wore a tuxedo shirt and black jeans. The bride wore, holy hell. The bride wore a custom gothic dress that looked like a purple, red, and black patchwork dress. Her hair was not brushed, and she did black makeup so heavily that you could barely see her face. I was shocked. Several people came up to me during the reception to say that I looked nice, but was upstaging the bride, which was not my intention. 
The bride herself was quiet the whole night. I tried to try to get to know her, as that's what she requested, but she wasn't interested. The wedding ended and on my way home, I got flooded with calls from her mother and new husband that I was a horrible person for, dressing like Grace Kelly and going out of my way to, make the bride feel ugly at her own wedding. I didn't, I just can't go somewhere, especially to what I thought was a formal event, looking less than my best. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. If the invite said cocktail attire, why was every other guest dressed for a barbecue? Why was the groom in jeans? And by tuxedo shirt, do you mean a shirt designed to be worn with a tuxedo, or, and this is what I'm picturing, a t-shirt with a tuxedo printed on the front? You were definitely dressed appropriately in my opinion, I'm not fancy enough to know whether t-length dresses are too long for cocktail attire. I would however focus on the fact that you thought you were dressed appropriately for a wedding, rather than your desire to look your best. The former makes this an unhappy misunderstanding, the latter makes it seem like you would prioritize your appearance, to the extent that you could feasibly try and upstage a bride. Info. It sounds like the entire style slash theme of the wedding was non-traditional and rather informal. Was this communicated to you beforehand? The invite said cocktail attire, which I know a t-length dress is too long for, but I thought it would be okay. T-length is usually fine for cocktail. And as the scholarship kid in a private school, I know my dress codes. Not the a-hole. The invite said cocktail attire. You wore cocktail attire. It seems like the bride and groom have an entirely different version of this concept, which was on them to communicate, especially to people who weren't in their close immediate circle. You said you never met this cousin before the wedding, so maybe it's best to go back to this type of relationship now. Seems drama. Perhaps they meant cocktail attire ironically. Otherwise this story makes no sense. Not the a-hole. Where in the world is cocktail attire only t-shirts and shorts? Did you get a separate invite or what the hell, how are you the only one who assumed cocktail attire actually meant cocktail attire? They must have confused cocktail with bar. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my brother and sister-in-law use my work benefit for a free honeymoon? My firm pays for a one-week trip to Hawaii for associates every year, flight plus condo paid for. I've gone three times now, and it's amazing. It's definitely the best perk at my workplace. This year though, it's obviously not available. The firm pays for two people, I don't have a significant other, so sometimes I will just take a friend or a family member with me. The first year, I went with my mom, the second year, I went with my dad, and the third year I went with a friend. Last summer. My brother and sister-in-law got married. When they were wedding planning, they asked if they could use my work paid vacation for their honeymoon. Their plan was for both of their flights to be paid for by my work, and my sister-in-law would fly under my name, and then they'd both use the company condo. I'm very sure that wouldn't be allowed, since the benefit is for the mental health of associates, not their family's honeymoon. Their other plan was for me to book my vacation during their honeymoon, take one of them with me as my guest, the other way would pay for their own ticket and then both of them would live in the condo, and I'd have to pay to stay in a hotel myself. My brother said that since I took my mom and dad before, it was his turn now. They also said that I'd easily afford to pay for a hotel slash my own vacation that year, but they wouldn't be able to. I said no, because I get very few vacation days, and I didn't want to use them up like that. I get 15 days personal time off, but trying to take a day off is so difficult in my line of work, especially consecutive days off. This would eat up 7 days of my PTO, even though I wouldn't even want to go at that time and I'd just be mucking around. I'd have to plan one of my very rare vacations around them, plus pay out of pocket for something that originally could have been free. I'm also certain my firm would frown upon me using work benefits this way. Plus, this may set a precedent for their future special occasions. I don't want this to become a permanent thing. They were furious, and threatened to uninvite me from their wedding, but they didn't go through with it. They started saving up to go to Hawaii as a belated honeymoon, and had booked a trip this summer, but was cancelled due to global situation. Now they're directing their anger back at me, saying that if I had just helped them out to begin with, they wouldn't be in this position, and that I should let them use my benefit whenever we're allowed to travel again. Also, before anyone asks, I don't have a good relationship with my brother. I don't think they're the worst human beings alive, but I don't like being around them. We have a lot of serious political disagreements and he's always trying to get money from me. When I was struggling, he had a that's your problem attitude and never once went out of his way to help me out. 
That's why I don't feel inclined to do this favor for them. He thinks I'm the a-hole, and my mom is suggesting I just concede for one year to smooth things over. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole, they were okay to ask and for you to refuse, but threatening to uninvite you from their wedding for not complying is harsh, and a bit childish. You're probably right, if your work found out, you could have been in trouble or worse, sacked. If they continue to make you feel guilty, tell them it's not your job to pay for their honeymoon nor should you risk your job for them to have a vacation, a honeymoon is in essence that, a vacation. Best of luck. I'm also pretty sure pretending to be someone else on your plane ticket is a big no-no in the eyes of DSA, and possible crime. Also, if the work find out she's giving her package to their family they could revoke her from ever using it again. Not worth the risk. That's what I was thinking was sister-in-law going to try to use a fake ID or something? Not the a-hole. You don't need this much context to get an AIT a determination. Either way that you do it, you are breaking the rules, and possibly some laws. Remind them that it's your benefit. They are free to work toward that same vacation, if it's so important to them. Not the a-hole. He wants to get married, he wants a honeymoon, then he should pay for it. Anyways, your job could really be upset by it and take that benefit away. Don't cave in. Lots of people don't have a honeymoon and live a pretty good life. I mean if they had suggested plan B first, and offered to pay for OP's hotel, I can at least see asking. But plan A is ludicrous and expecting someone else to pay for your honeymoon, never mind all the other reasons OP doesn't want to do this, is beyond entitled. He thinks I'm the a-hole, and my mom is suggesting I just concede for one year to smooth things over. Don't negotiate with emotional terrorists. All it does is teach them that they can threaten to disrupt the family anytime they want their way. You're not responsible for the pandemic wrecking anyone's plans. You don't owe anyone a free trip to Hawaii. You also don't owe anyone any access to your work benefits, and you're certainly under no obligation to set a schedule for people to exploit your benefits. You're not the a-hole. In the future, make it clear to your family that since Hawaii is such a point of conflict for everyone, you simply won't be asking anyone else in the family to join you. And those are the stories for this video guys. As always leave a comment below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more content. Turn on your notification to get updated on the latest videos. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.